Hi, it's Ms. Lassell and welcome to Faith and Wigs Private Tutoring. Let's jump right into section three. All right, but today we're going to do an express um, newspaper section three as a practice test. And don't forget, make sure you show your working whilst you're working along with me. Pause the video, try the question on your own, then press play and see if you get the same answer as me. So let's jump into the first question. All right, so let's look at number 37. We're in section three. A mathematics test is made up of two sections. Both sections have an equal number of questions. The total mark for the entire test is 60 marks. The entire test has 20 questions. How many marks are given to one correct answer in section two? If section one has a total of 20 marks. Uh -huh. All right, so let's see how we're gonna tackle this. All right, so let's think about the remainder. Let's take out some information. Let's remove the excess if you will. So that's the that remainder. Remaining marks. All right, so we have 60 minus 20, right? 20 marks here. That's 40 marks. Right? Okay, so what this means is section one is with 20 marks, but section two is with 40 marks. So we need to figure out how many questions, but they have the same number of questions. Okay, let me see if I can, you know, I wanted to draw this out, but. Yeah, that's all. Let me see something. So, section one. All right, so that would be. So, the entire test has 20 questions. So, that means, and if they have an equal number of questions, that means section one has 10 questions. And section two. Is it a different color? Section two has 10 questions, right? But the value of marks per question, so one question in section one is equal to two marks or two points, right? So now, okay, so now we have visualized it. We can, and we know there are 40 remaining marks up for grabs. So that means in section two, 10 questions equals 40 marks, right? 40 marks. So one question would be 40 divided by 10. Four marks. Look at that. Right? So you can, for the visual learners, it's easy to put a little chart or something. So you could figure out the best way for you to interpret the question. Because as they say, show your work in. If you can show how you got from the question to the answer, if you have to draw, draw. But once you can show your work in, make sure and do that. All right, let's go to the next question, part of the question. So this has two parts. So part B says, Quincy got six questions correct in section one and seven questions correct in section two. 
how many marks if you score on the test? Okay, so we know section one, uh, each question is with two marks. So we could say section one equals six questions by six Q by two marks. And that will give us 12 marks. Right, section two, he got seven questions times four marks. That will give us a total of 28 marks. So total marks Twenty eight plus twelve forty. Boom. So sometimes in your two part questions with where there's part A and B, the pet your first answer, your A answer can affect your answer in B. So you have to make sure the top is correct before you get to the bottom. Because if A is wrong, then B is going to be wrong. Right? Good. Let's head to the next question. All right. So this one says, state the two triangles. State which two triangles two are similar. Give your reason. So we're looking for two triangles. Right. So we should be able to, this is a right angle. This looks equilateral this is scaling oh this is also a right angle aha uh -huh. so that means a and c are similar because they are right angled triangles or well, they both have right angles Right, easy, on to the next. Hannah stands next to, next to a tree in her yard. Hannah is 150 centimeters tall. The tree is 1,590 centimeters tall, estimating the height of the tree to the nearest meter. Now, there are two ways you can do this. You can change everything to meters and you will with meters, that unit of measurement, or you change, you work with centimeters, and then in the end, you change it to meters, right? Since both of the measurements are in centimeters, we will work with that, and then in the end, we're gonna change it to meters. Some people are stronger with those that's doing it that way, some people are not. So let's keep it simple, right? And then in the end, we will just change everything. All right, estimate the height of the tree to the nearest meter. Simple, estimate means we're gonna round it. We're gonna round it off. All right, so we have 1590 centimeters. So that is approximately, um, 1,600 or 1,600 centimeters, right? Uh, to the nearest meter now. So there is one meter is 100 centimeters. So... 1600 centimeters. We're going to divide by 100. 16 meters. All right, so the tree is approximately 16 meters tall. All right, pretty simple. Let's go to the next part of the question, part B. 
All right, about how many times the height of Hannah is the height of the tree? So about also means we're estimating. So it's not going to be exact. We would have to do some rounding off. All right. So the tree is about 1,600 centimeters. Right? Because it didn't say exactly or what is the exact height or exact times. All right. About to be using the estimation. Um, Hannah is, how much is Hannah? 150 centimeters. All right, so number of times, you see I'm putting my statements. Make sure you have your statements at all times. So the examiner can follow step by step how you get the answer. So we're going to estimate... Uh, uh, 15. 15, that's about 10 point something with some remainder. So it comes up to about 10.66. Right, we're doing a long division. So we're going to round that up to 11 times. So number of times would be 11. Or if you want to work it this way, we could use her own measurement. So we could go 15. Oh, no, that's too light. Fifteen ninety. We could use that divided by 15. Uh, 150. All right, you're going to go still, still be like 1. This will be like 10 point something, something, right? So we round it up to 11 because it's more than 10.5. So we round it up to 11. Nice. Okay, let's head to the last question in this section three. I must say this is one of the easiest section threes ever we've done so far if you've gone through the other videos. So that's a good sign. If it's getting easier, that means our skills are getting stronger. So let's keep practicing. Last question. All right. The bar graph shows homemade ice cream sales during last week. I love homemade ice cream. Um, the flavors of the ice cream are missing from the graph. Coconut is like most. Sour sup is like least. I agree with that. Sorrel is preferred more than passion fruit. Okay, so... Great clues. Coconut is like the most. So label the graph below. Coconut is like the most. So we're looking for the highest number of sales. So 150 seems high to me. Coconut goes here. Coconut. The least. So that means out of all the flavors. Out of four flavors, as it is, we'll be looking for the lowest number of sales. That'll be this one. So this would be sour sup. Now we're supposed to write at the bottom here, but as you can see, I don't have much space, so let's improvise. All right, sour sup. And I spell it sour soup. <laughs> then Sorrels we feel more than passion fruit. So a little people, a little, a few more people like sorrel more than they like passion fruit. Um, so out of these two remaining here, this one is higher. Okay, good. So that means this one is sorrel. So therefore, this one is passion. Fruit. Right? Easy peasy squeezy. On to the next part. So now that we know part um, A, let's see if we can solve part B. 
All right, part B says, how many sorrow flavored ice cream were sold? So let's go back up to the graph. And we know that this one is sorrow. Right, so this one is sorrow here. Okay, so the graph, the sales section, this is how many they sold over here. This vertical axis here. Um, it's divided into 50 parts. So each line represents 50. Right. So from here to here is 50, 50, 50. Now, sorrel, as we can see, is half of. It meets halfway. Let's draw a line. Right, so half of 50, right, so it's in 50 increments. So half of 50 is 25. So therefore, Write that down. So this would be 125 here. So sorrel sales, um, 125. All right, this is 150 here. So we read in the graph, this is 100. This graph comes about also halfway. So if they were to ask, what was the last one? Sour sub, if they wanted the price of sour sub, uh, halfway between 50 and 100 is 75. So this would have been 75. And there we have it. So good work. I hope that was a really fun um, section three. So if you want more practice, I have other parts. You can check out my previous videos and so make sure to like and subscribe and share to your friends so you all can do questions together and see if you all get the same answers you can do with your parents, right? And or you can do it on your own. That would be a very good show initiative into your studies, right? You could put on a video, pause, answer the questions on your own and see if you get the same answers as me. All right, so thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and click on the next video.